Namaste. The CITER, Center for Yoga Therapy Education and Research, has been functioning in the Sri Balaji Vidyapit University since November 1, 2010. CITER is an innovative center. It is a center focusing on cellotogenesis, all the causes and the methods to maintain, sustain and attain health in the individual. The innovative focus of CITER is on salutogenesis, the concept of health promotion and disease prevention and management that enables us to work towards the holistic health and well-being for all. All students of the constituent colleges of Sibalaji Vidyapit are exposed to the yoga training on a regular basis. Yoga, the ancient art and science given to us by the Indian civilization, the gift to the entire humankind is being propagated through Sri Balaji Vidya Pit in an innovative manner. Here at CITER, because we are in a healthcare medical institution, we are able to serve those patients who are suffering from various psychosomatic, lifestyle, stress-induced disorders. Patients at our hospital, the Mahatma Gandhi Medical Hospital here, they get the yoga therapy as part of the entire treatment protocol. A patient with diabetes would get the diabetic management of modern medicine and in addition, the adjuvant therapy of yoga along with it. Similarly, we are doing work in psychiatry, we are doing work in dermatology, neurology, neurosurgery, and of course, obstetrics and gynecology. At CITER, we are focusing on three aspects, therapy, education, and research. Yoga is the greatest contribution of India to the entire mankind of the world. Recently, the government of India is currently promoting indigenous system of health, including yoga, in strong manner through the Ministry of Ayush. As a therapeutic center in a medical institution, we have given yoga therapy as individual, small group, and larger group settings for more than 52,000 patients in the last nine and a half years. We have looked at giving them an opportunity to heal themselves, facilitating the self-resilience and self-healing mechanisms through adjuvant yoga therapy. Along with this, we have done extensive research. The research in the form of 19 completed projects, 88 publications, 31 abstracts, and nine copyrights in the name of Sri Balaji Vidyapit. CITER has contributed to many best practices that are innovative. And nine of these have received copyright registration in the name of Sri Balaji Vidyapit. And three of them are very close to our heart because we address the neglected sectors of the population through these best practices. One, for the uh, special children through the Divyanga Yoga and second one for the senior citizen of the society through the Silver Yoga and third one to the transgender population through the salutogenic uh, approach to the transgenders. And uh, through these, we are uh, alleviating the problems. Uh, many of their problems which have not been addressed through the yoga techniques, through the various aspects and concepts of yoga, we are able to reach out to them through these practices and techniques. I am Dayanidhi, working as a yoga lecturer at CITER SBV. I am really happy to doing my PhD yoga therapy at CITER. Here we have a hands-on experience with uh, patients coming from various departments. Also, we can go into different wards 
even i see you to giving yoga therapy for the various kinds of patients and here site we can build a connection between modern science allopathy with the ancient science yoga looking into the hows why and the mechanisms of how yoga therapy enhances healing facilitating a state of health physically emotionally mentally socially and even spiritually we are very unique because we can offer different yoga therapy academic programs under the banner of shri balaji vidyapeet saiter has started various programs such as diplomas post graduate certificate programs mphil programs as well as phd programs in yoga in addition to that in the field of academics for the first time we have introduced yoga therapy in the curriculum of uh, nursing college in our institute our therapy programs are ranging from pg certificates in yoga as a therapy pg diploma in yoga therapy mphil in yoga therapy all the way up to the phd in yoga therapy hi i'm ellie wilson i'm visiting from australia i am doing an internship with saita i've had many amazing experiences working in the hospital in the neurosurgery department neurology and uh recently general surgery numerous students have graduated as yoga therapists becoming the first to come out of this innovative setting in a modern healthcare institution we have been celebrating the international day of yoga right since the first such day in 2015 and every year a minimum of a week if not two to three weeks of activities involving various stakeholders thus propagating yoga in its holistic manner saita is one of the rare centers in the whole world where yoga therapy is part and parcel of the day to day activities of a medical institution our patients benefit from yoga the students of shri balaji vidyapeet whether they are medical dental or nursing they are exposed to yoga as part of the curricular and extracurricular activities this is truly one of its kind center in the world and we thank the international community for its support for all our activities we thank the benevolent management of shri balaji vidyapeet the visionary administrators who enable us to do our best to bridge the traditional system of yoga with modern medicine promotion of yoga in the society among the students among the people and will keep our flag of sbb flying very high as the world health organization is saying today traditional complementary integrative medicine is the future of medicine and saita is striving to achieve that future right today along with your wonderful cooperation thank you so नमस्ते वनकम स्वागत नमस्कार बोनशोर नो टू सम ऑफ यू हू आर इन यूरोप इट्स नॉट टू मच अ बोन सेर एंड बोन नॉट ए बट फ्रॉम मलेशिया ऑफ कोर्स इट इज मोर इन टू द आफ्टरनून नाउ सो वेलकमिंग ऑल ऑफ यू टू अवर डे सिक्स ऑफ एस बी बी आई डी वाई लेट्स गेट स्ट्रेट इन टू दी प्रोसीडिंग्स विद अवर योगी प्रेयर सहन बुणक्त 
सहभेम गर्वाबहै तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मावेदिशावहै ओम शांते 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 ही ओम वेलकमिंग एवरीवन टू टुडे सेशन we have a very beautiful opportunity today and this opportunity is something that i greatly appreciate because i have an opportunity to introduce and welcome today someone who is an example an example of how the cultural context of yoga can be kept alive even if you are not in india and this has become one of my key key points these days is how to have culturally appropriate yoga because there's a lot of misappropriation and appropriation how can yoga be kept alive in a culturally appropriate manner even if you are not living in india and i have an opportunity today to introduce my dear shri bharata shri bharata whom i have known for many years now thanks to an opportunity created in montreal where we had the opportunity to meet for the first time courtesy of yoga shakti mugs and an amazing retreat organized by radu and aishwarya and ever since then have been deeply connected to shri bharata who is someone who has understood the depth of indian culture and i don't use these words uh too flippantly i never use these words too flippantly because for me flippancy doesn't exist flippancy doesn't exist in my dictionary because everything has to be done in the proper way in the proper manner it is not something which can be flippant so when i use this term it is done with great affection great affection and that great affection that is coming from a very special place a very special place which comes because shri bharata has been ordained as a spiritual teacher and priest in the lineage of one of the greatest masters i have been blessed to receive the blessings of sant keshav das ji sant keshav das ji had come to pondicherry in 1993 my father invited him for the first yoga festival by the government of pondicherry and so my father said i have to bring the best of the best to pondicherry how do you get the best of best to pondicherry well swami ji wrote to each and every one of these eminent masters and sadguru sant keshav das ji was one of the masters swami ji invited he gave an amazing session in pondicherry and i remember after that after the yoga festival he visited ic vaya and sitting in front of the huge ganesha statue we have in our arti shrine he and his team sat down and sang a beautiful bhajan om gam ganapatiye namaha it was an amazing moment which i cherish so when i came to know that shri bharata is part of that tradition a very deep connection was made a very deep connection and since 1969 that's 3 years before i was born so you can realize how why i appreciate people who are senior to me in age senior in experience and give me so much of love becoming part of our geetananda family in recent times and one of those most dedicated dedicated sadhakas 
When I have my sessions in the afternoons, they have to get up in the morning at three, four o'clock in their part of the world and never miss a session. Never miss a session. People in India have trouble getting to my sessions in Indian time. He created a very beautiful organization, Mantra Vijaya. There are two ways to look at Vijaya. One is victory. Another way is journey. When we say the word Vijayam, it is also a journey. So the journey through mantra that gives you victory. What a beautiful term. And has been teaching in more than two dozen countries. And what does he promote? Not plastic yoga, not Jada yoga, not Barbie doll yoga. He promotes the development of experiential yogic knowledge based on the Vedic scriptures and the classic yoga texts taught, as taught by authentic tradition and with respectful scholarship. This is culturally appropriate yoga and this is why I want to make this point today that Sri Bharata is one of those embodiments of culturally appropriate yoga in the West today. He serves on the board of the Sanatana Dharma Sangha and with a background in comp computing and in management, I think he's uh, sort of left the external management to deal with the internal management. With this very short introduction, I could go on for hours and hours because when I find a gem, I want to make sure the light that shines through that gem is known by the world. That is the most important role. And hence, with these few words of appreciation, I would like to invite Sri Bharata to give his presentation today. I welcome all our dignified panelists today, Rama Reddy sir, my dear Shailaja, my dear Sangeeta, Daya Nidhi and others who are here. And welcoming all of you, giving the screen over to you, Sri Bharata. Namaste. Thank you, Dr. Anandaji. Um, um, I've been blessed. I've been blessed with some, some great teachers. And I'm very thankful today that uh, those blessings are continuing thanks to your work, your, your father and mother's work. Uh, it's an honor. It's an honor to be here. Um, thank you so much. And I will begin a screen share. And where is my uh, just a moment? Okay. And I trust that you can hear me properly. We can hear you, but I cannot see a screen. Does this? Maybe if you go back and come back with the screen share. Okay. Yes. Now, now it is starting. Yes. Perfect. Very good. And the audio is okay. Perfect. Perfect. Purnam. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, special thanks to the uh, CITER team uh, and, and SBB. Um, and special thanks to Four wonderful teachers. Uh, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. And the outline level of, of the presentation today uh, in the 
first 10, 15 minutes, I will be highlighting some, some foundational components and then getting into so, several uh, specific teachings uh, from the, the certain lifestyle methodologies, uh, some specific methods from the Yoga Sutras and the Bhagavad Gita, uh, with some further guidance from, for example, the Upanishads and, and, and a, a couple of quotes from some of the, the, the respected masters. Um, highlighting progressions of attainable results, highlighting measures of progression. Now, now, I approach this topic with great reverence and great uh, practicality. Um, these are esoteric teachings, yes, but the benefits of this journey are very practical and, and, and practical benefits that can be experienced in daily life in terms of, for example, in terms of, of improved cognitive and mental health, in terms of improved relationships, in terms of especially improved relationships with ourselves, um, spiritual strengths, vitality, and, and, and attainment of spiritual goals. Um, we'll begin with a few uh, definitions and terms. Uh, for those who have studied the Yoga Sutras, uh, the more familiar term is, is Ishwara Pranidhana, uh, which is one of the five niyamas, the five ethical observances that are essential foundational uh, components of Ashtanga Yoga. Um, and as Swami Gitananda explained, most authorities, most of the respected commentators on the, the Yoga Sutras state that the intended meaning of Ishwara in the context of the Yoga Sutras is not God, but Atman, the real self. And, and in modern times, the, the, the term God has taken on so much uh, baggage and so much extraneous meaning. Uh, the term Atman is, is much purer and, and, and more elevated. And, and interestingly enough, um, we see that, that uh, so the great Swami Vivekananda has a similar sentiment in terms of Ishwara is the Atman. And to, to quote an explanation from Swami Gitananda, Atman Pranidhana is often called Ishwara Pranidhana, the attentiveness to God. But I feel that it means learning to interpret the voice of the inner reality, the inner nature, the Atman. Listen to the voice of, of, in the quiet, obey instantly without reservation. Pranidhana is often translated as surrender. A more meaningful understanding is that Atman Pranidhana involves devotional attunement to the higher divine force within us, and then surrender of the personal will to that higher divine will after making our best effort. We do our best and then we trust in the divine to take care of the rest. Um, Atman as the true higher self of the individual. Atman is Brahman. Brahman is Atman. Brahman, the Paramatma, the great Purusha, known by many names, the great Purusha, the unmanifest source, the oversoul, the absolute, the Atman, called the Jiva, the soul, is said to be, is said to be part of Brahman that appears to be separate. A quote from the great Vivekananda, in the Upanishads, there is already great doctrine of the Atman and the Brahman. The Atman self is the same as Brahman, the Lord. This self is all that is, is the only reality. Maya, delusion, makes us see it differently. There is one self, not many, and that self shines in many forms. And we see that same sentiment in the Upanishad examples below here. Atman, smaller than the small, greater than the grace, great, is hidden in the hearts of all living creatures from the Kappa Upanishad. And at the bottom of this slide, one of my favorite quotes on this topic is from the Chandogya Upanishad. There is in this city of Brahman, the human body, an abode, the small lotus of the heart. Within it is a small akasha, a small space. And this is the part that I emphasize. 
Now, what exists within that small akasha, that is to be sought after. That is what one would desire to understand. A profound teaching that we will explore in the, in the subsequent slides. Atman Pranadana is a journey of ultimate transformation. It is not accomplished by intellectual study or scripture. There's great value in study in, of the scripture. In fact, daily exposure to scripture in the classic yoga te texts, the inspirational writings, it's very important. But it's not, this is not an intellectual and a, a, a pro process. It is not about the glorification or preservation of the individual identity, personality, nor ego. It is much bigger than that. The infinite localized individual, the finite localized individual transcends to reconnect with our divine self. The individual conscious awareness moves from the world of duality and the pairs of opposites to the non-dual consciousness. The drop merges into the ocean. This is a journey built upon the principles and practices taught in the great Vedic scriptures and the classic yoga texts. And our tour guides for this journey are the great authentic teachings of the great rishis, the great Vedic rishis, sages and masters. And it is a journey with the highest possible rewards. Atman Pranadana, growth and transformation through living yoga involves the best, creating the best possible version of ourselves, enables many practical benefits, physical health, mental health, spiritual health, achievement of the four purushatas, the four aims of life, artha, kama, dharma, and moksha. And we will speak, be speaking a bit about dharma as we set our aim and our goal towards moksha. And we transcend the finite human ego personality to re reunite with our eternal soul potential. Foundational component of this journey is the works that came to us through the great Maharishi Patanjali, uh, the eight limbs of yoga. Ashta meaning eight, Anga meaning part. All eight parts are required to make the whole. We have the yamas and the, niya, the niyamas, and I'll, I'll spend a few moments on that in a minute. And we have the recognizable list that hopefully is familiar with, with everyone, the asanas, the pranayama, the pratyahara, the dharana, the dhyana, and the samadhi. And we will be delving into the yamas and the niyamas, especially into the pranayama principles and the pratyahara and dharana as we proceed. The pancha niyama, the pancha yamas, the five yamas, the five do nots, the abstinences, the ahimsa, satya, astyaya, uh, brahmacharya, aparigraha, and the niyamas, the five niyamas, the ethical observances, these are the do's. The priority of attaining satya, purification, inner and outer. And we'll spend, <clears throat> we'll spend some time on this topic of, of purification. Santosha, mental serenity. The tapas, the disciplined life. The daily satana. The swadhyaya, a very important component of this journey. The self-analysis, the introspection. And the atman pranidana, as has been uh, touched upon already. Um, and, and, and interestingly enough, um, Swami Gitananda referred to the Ashtanga yoga as, as no option yoga, with especially uh, emphasis, a special emphasis on the strong foundation of the yamas and the niyamas uh, as being of paramount importance, more than essential, required for the complete journey. We have an image from the, a metaphorical image from the Kata Upanishad, which is very helpful. This is an image of the, the human body as a chariot. 
the metaphor is that the charioteer steering the chariot is our higher intellect. The reins on the horses are controlled by our mind. The senses are the horses that we are trying to control. Riding in the back, looking very comfortably in this, comfortable in this image is the Atman, the silent witness. Lifetime after lifetime, the silent witness waiting for us to hear the inner call, to seek the higher truth, to seek the higher selves. And of course, this chariot is traveling on the, the, the road that this chariot is traveling on is the, the, represents the journey of life. So the key question here is, who or what is driving your chariot? Oh, now, what's interesting about this is that if our awareness is mostly up here in the outer fringe, immersed in the senses, controlled by the senses, as opposed to being the senses being managed or, 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 or with, the, with selectivity being, being managed by ourselves and by our mind. Um, if that is the case, our inner self, our inner luminosity is overshadowed, is overshadowed by the, the ups and downs, the turmoils, the dramas of, of the world, the, the, the intensities of our emotions. Um, two days ago in this wonderful Yoganar series, there was a very inspiring teacher, Dr. Ramesh Bijlani of the Sri Aurobindo Ashram. And he taught the mind needs an anchor and that anchor is the soul. Now, this rider in the front of this, this chariot parade is in need of an anchor and we can ex we can access our anchor through transformation of our identity and these teachings and this journey is about the transformation of our identity the the transformation of the vantage point of where we sit in this chariot and the vantage point of where we interact with life interact with the world um, progressively moving our awareness from the, the leading edge of the bumpy ride of these horses, these senses, closer to the center, closer to the peaceful, deeper center of the Atman. And one closing thought on this chariot here a quote from an inspiring teacher, uh, Swami Ambikananda. Uh, I liked uh, her book on the, uh, the Uddhava Gita. It was very illumined uh, translation and commentary. And she wrote that the charioteer who forgets this eternal presence will become absorbed in this field of action. And the chariot will continue without purpose or direction. It is by remembrance of the self, with the capital S, that control of the chariot is maintained and the goal, full realization of the self is reached. So how do we approach the Atman? Well, here's a first step in these teachings from the Yoga Sutras. We have uh, from the second chapter of the Yoga Sutras, verse 41, through purity, we attain fitness for, che for cheerfulness, for one-pointedness, for sensory mastery, and the ability of self-witnessing. So let's look at those four terms. And this, this, these prerequisites for self-witnessing, increased purification, saucha, enables in increased sattva, resulting in a more positive outlook, resulting in that ekagra, that improved mental focus, that sharpness that, that, that's necessary for dharana, and decreased sensory attachment. So this term fitness, we see that in some of the scriptures. We want to attain fitness for worship, 
what what that means is fitness for attunement Ex preparing our spiritual body our, 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 our the layers of ourselves to improve our capacity to enable us to receive the vision of the divine self the vision the darshan of the atman through purity we become fit for darshan so this a term here that might be new to some folks, the term sattva. Sattva is said to be purification through sattva and the three gunas, the three qualities of nature. Just a quick overview on these three qualities of nature. The teaching is that everything in manifest creation is a mix of the three gunas, the sattva guna, the raja, rajas, the rajasic, and the tamasic, the universal principle of illuminus, of activity, of inertia. The teaching is that the whole world is a complex mix of these three gunas, these three qualities of nature. The three gunas cause maya or delusion, which binds the individual to the physical world. These three gunas create feelings of ego, attachment, and possessiveness which cause us to identify more tightly with these three qualities. It binds us to these three qualities of, the, of physical existence. When the sattva guna is predominant in man, his mind elevates. He gains purity of heart, thought, and deed. A quote from Saint Keshavdas. One more of these preliminary uh, overviews, uh, the pancha koshas, the five coverings, the five bodies, the five sheaths of, ex the, the, some scriptures refer to the sheaths of existence. The five bodies, the, the anamaya kosha, the physical, the pranamaya kosha, the pranic body, the manamaya kosha, the mind body, the vinayanamaya kosha, the intellect, the higher mind, Ananda Maya Kosha, the bliss body. And the teaching is that, that from this outer level of the physical body to this inner level, these bodies surround at the centermost level, the Atman. Two points to make on this, this topic today uh, is a teaching of, from Swami Gitananda, uh, Nara, psychic dissociation is a condition where there's a malalignment, a misalignment, a disconnect between these four lower bodies, the physical, the pranamaya, the manamaya, and the bananamaya. And this dissociation, this, this nara, is, is a foundational cause of many disorders, physical disorders, mental disorders, emotional disorders. And this teaching is, is, is much more greatly explored and, 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 and explained. Uh, in, in Swami Gitananda's teaching, for example, in the, in the 52 week uh, lessons, the 52 week correspondence course. The second key point on this, the Ananda Maya Kosha is never out of alignment. Although the four lower bodies may be out of harmony with the highest, the Ananda Maya Kosha, the cosmic body, the Ananda Maya Kosha, the cosmic body is never out of align with its cosmic counterpart. The Anandamaya Kosha is like a bindu within the Maha Bindu, a point within the cosmic point. We'll explore this concept a little further later in the presentation in terms of this Maha Bindu. But this is good news. This, this, this is our lifeline. This is our connection with the Paramatma. This is our connection with, 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 with the unmanifest, with our source. Um, here's another teaching that is a great starting point for some of the practices, the importance of some of the practices. We've got a few slides on the, the, the Yoga Sutra's teachings on a shroud covering that hides, a shroud or covering that hides the inner illumination of the Atman. And from the second chapter of, of, of the Yoga Sutras, verse Sutra 52, 
thereby the shroud that hides the inner effulgence is destroyed. Thereby is a key term in this, in this phrase because thereby is referring to the three prior sutras which were emphasizing the importance of pranayama. This is explained in a quotation from Dr. Ananda in, from, from the uh, Yoga Sutras course, from, and, and well, taken from the book that, that, that Dr. Ananda's commentary on, on the Yoga Dashan, the, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. In that high state of pranayama, the dark ignorance which shrouded the inner effulgence is destroyed. The vision of that divine inner light, the divine luminosity, prakasha, is obtained. The vision of that divine inner light, that divine inner luminosity is obtained. The effulgence has, the effulgence has always been there, but it has been obscured by arrogance, ignorance, arrogant ignorance. Opening to the higher universal nature, one sees what was earlier hidden. The true sattvaka nature of the luminosity is discovered within. Well, there's an endorsement of pranayama. Let's see what else we have on this topic. Continuing with the same sutra, thereby the shroud that hides the inner effulgence is destroyed. We have an explanation of the same teaching from Swami Shivananda of Rishikesh, who stated that the tamas and rajas constitute the covering of the veil. This is the residual effects of past karma, is, 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 is the coverings of the, or the veil. This veil is removed by the practice of pranayama. After the veil is removed by the practice of pranayama, the real nature of the soul is realized. The chitta itself is made up of sattvic particles, but it is enveloped by that rajas and tamas, just as a fire is enveloped by smoke. There is no purificatory action greater than pranayama. Pranayama gives purity and the light of knowledge shines. The karma of the yogi, which covers up the discriminative knowledge is annihilated by the practice of pranayama. The karma of the yogi is annihilated by the practice of pranayama. Wow, this karma of the yogi, which covers up the light binds him or her to repeated births. It becomes attenuated by the practice of pranayama every moment and is eventually destroyed. Now, interestingly, we see the same teaching in the Shiva Samhita, although the reference is, is regulation of breath, but that's, that's a, a reference to pranayama practice, removing all of our karma. And there are some additional teachings on this same topic of covering uh, cover the shroud covering the inner effulgence elsewhere in the yoga sutras but before we leave this slide a couple of other key points um, in that A couple of other key points are that it is through the practice of pranayama that we can make this progress. It is, it is through the practice of pranayama that we can further attune to the increased prana shakti within. The prana shakti being essentially the increased activity, the increased enlivenment of the internal prana shakti is an essential component for the expanding inner attunements. It can help us lead progressively to inner awakenings and activations. <clears throat> Slow and steady wins the race on that journey, but that inner Shakti is yet another enabling vehicle for our progress. And interestingly enough, that inner, that as that inner Shakti activates further and we become more easily able to attune to that, it strengthens our ability to learn dharana, to learn the inner, to experience the inner dharana, which is so important. Um, 
And interestingly enough, in the Yoga Sutras, one of the points made in, in, in Sutra 52 in chapter two is that it makes us fit. This, this teaching, this, this removal of the shroud and covering makes us for, fit for dharana practice, for that inner dharana practice. Moving on to a couple of teachings from other sources, uh, the Katha Upanishad, the, the teachings of the Atman, the divinity exists in the heart of all, uh, in the hearts of all. Atman, smaller than the smallest. We've seen that quote earlier today. In the Bhagavad Gita, we have the great teaching from Lord Krishna, who's speaking to Arjuna says, O oh, Arjuna, the Lord is lodged in the hearts of all creatures. And it is by cosmic delusion of Maya that compels all beings to rotate as if attached to a machine. I believe that rotation is a reference to the cycles of rebirth. <clears throat> Many scriptures state that the Atman is approachable within, described in various ways, in the hidden Akasha space or in the cave within the heart or in an auxiliary, auxiliary chakra that is near the Anahata chakra sometimes with reference to eight petal chakras and, and called by many names, uh, the Hridya Manas chakra, the Hrit Padma, the Hridaya, the Dara Akasha, the Sacred Heart. The Atman exists in the hearts of all. From the Bhagavad Gita, the same teaching, from Bhagavad Gita chapter 13, verse 15 through 17, this is the same teaching. This, the Atman is within and without all that exists, animate and inanimate, inanimate. So we're expanding that, that scope to the Atman is present in inanimate objects as well. Near and far, imperceptible because of the subtlety, the light of all lights beyond darkness, knowledge itself, which is, which is to be known, the goal of all learning is seated in the hearts of all. We have a, th there are various mantras that can be helpful on this journey. You can be very helpful on this journey. We'll only cover one today uh, briefly uh, because the, this forum is, is not ideal to, 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 to the personal instruction uh, of, of mantra. Um, but the beach, if this is a teaching from, from the teachings of San Keshavalas, uh, the Bija Mantra and the heart's and seat of the Atman, which he referred to as the Hrit Padma, the eight petal chakra located just beneath, just below the Anahata chakra. Also known, known by many names, which we just highlighted, the Hreem Bija. Hreem is the yearning heart cry of the created towards its creator. It's a beautiful sentiment. Uh, the Devi Gita. All my worship can be performed with the mantra Hreem. Of all mantras, Hreem is regarded as the supreme guide. Hreem is the point all the Vedas are trying to make clear. Hreem is the, be is the end of all learning and the beginning of true knowledge. Some powerful sentiments there, some powerful, profound teachings there. Moving on to some important teachings from the Yoga Sutras. Um, stopping the whirlpools of the mind. As Dr. Anandaji pointed out as he taught this recently in a wonderful uh, online session that is still available for those who wish to, to, to take it. Uh, yoga, from Yoga Sutras, chapter one, verse two. This is pointed to as, as, as a frequently as, as a definition of yoga. Yoga is the cessation of the whirlpools of the subconscious mind. Once there is that cessation of the whirlpools pool of the pools of the subconscious mind, then in, in, in the third verse, the third sutra, the seer is established in the form of its real being. This is a reference to after the cessation of the whirlpools, then the, in, the individual has access to the Atman. So 
we have, if not, if, if, if we do not s stop these whirlpools, then our awareness becomes identified with the forms of modification, identified with these whirlpools. The teaching is that there are five fold and, uh, of, of these avrityas that, that, that are causing this whirlpool. Uh, and this also is, 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 is reference to the, the, the five kleshas, the, the five obstacles to uh, yogic growth. Um, and these five fold obstacles, these five fold avrityas they can be either painful or non-painful. So some students, some uh, aspirants would 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 want to investigate this. Would want to study these. What are these five vrittis? What are these? What are these whirlpools? What are these cause for? Can I study them? Can I examine them? Um, there's a better approach. We we don't want to focus on the cause of of the problem. We want to the cessation of these whirlpools is brought about by effort coupled with objectivity. Effort covered, coupled with objectivity. Here's the effort, abhyasa, the self-effort, with guidance from, from Dr. Ananda's mother, Amachi. The three R's, regularity, repetition, rhythm. This, this is the daily satana. This is, is our continuous effort. And, and the second component, this objectivity that's referenced in the sutra, varyagya. This is objectivity of dispassionate detachment that must be cultivated. And the next several sutras go on to say, steady and firm is the effort. The, the effort is the foundation of the practice. The effort is, is, is prolonged, uninterrupted, it takes time. We have to invest that time. Having a higher purpose, a, a, a higher reverence, a higher spiritual aspiration. Vairagya is a state of supreme mastery where there is no desire for experience that can be either seen or heard. It's, it's doing the best we can without attachment. Um, so looking back at the verse uh, at, at sutra number three in, in, in chapter one of the Yoga Sutras, then the seer is established in the form of being, of its real being. This then is the reference to that cessation of the whirlpools. Then the individual has gained access, gained greater access moving toward the Atman, moving to the Atman. Darshan of the divine, darshan of the Atman, personalized to the sincere devotee. The Bhagavad Gita teaches us that in chapter four, verse 11, in whatever way people are devoted to me, this is Lord Krishna speaking to us, in whatever way people are devoted to me, in that measure, I manifest myself to them. The teaching is that the divine being, the divine will appear to the sincere devotee in a form that that devotee can, devotee can understand and relate to. The Ishta Devata, this is the concept of the Ishta Devata. This is the experience for the fortunate, uh, this is the experience of the Ishta Devata. With a reference to the Yoga Sutras, through introspectional self-analysis, we become one with our inherent divinity. And this sutra is explained in Dr. Ananda's book on the Yoga Sutras, perfection in swadhyaya, that inner, that detached introspection, that skillful self-analysis produces communion with the Ishta Devata, one's personal deity, one's divinity. A profound teaching, a very important teaching. A couple of examples we have some metaphorical imagery that, that is, uh, it's a little change of pace, it's a, it's a little bit wild, but I'll highlight it because it's unusual and then we'll explain what it means. Um, in a prayer verse regarding a vision of divine mother Lalita, coming from the, the Sandarya Lahari, Lahari, 
uh, written by Sri Adi Shankaracharya. Blessed are the few that worship thee, the flood of consciousness and bliss, having as thy abode the lap of the supremely auspicious one in the mansion built from gems, which yield all desires, situated in a gar garden on an island of gems, surrounded by divine trees in an ocean of ambrosia. My, this sounds like a, a, pl a wonderful place to be. We have a similar uh, illumined imagery, metaphorical imagery uh, from the, the Sharada Tilaka text about the Ganesha Loka, the abode of bliss of Ganesha, Ganesha's abode of bliss. The Chintamani Dwipa, the island of the wish jewel, is discussed in an ocean of sugarcane juice. The beautiful island of the Chintamani Dwipa dwells. In the center of the island, there is a mystical wish-fulfilling tree called the Parajata. At the foot of the tree is a great altar where Ganesha can be seen sitting here. Now, what the heck is going on with this? This is unusual. And the reason I take the time to, 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 to spend a couple of slides on this is that this imagery is, is common to, to, to quite a few texts. These are just a few that I was aware of. Um, so it comes up often. And of course, the, 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 the deity that's sitting on that lotus of gems is, is the deity of that particular lineage. It's either Ganesha or it's Shiva or it's Kali or it's divine mother Lakshmi. <clears throat> so common to many traditions where the Atman appears as a recognizable deity. We have the jeweled altar as, as a lotus seat, sometimes on an eight petal jeweled altar within a chamber of gems, the Chintamani Graha on an island of gems the, with esoteric wish-fulfilling trees surrounded by this ocean of, of, of ambrosia or a sea of nectar. The symbolism here, the ocean of ambrosia or the sea of nectar represents our consciousness. The jewels or gems represents the power of our thoughts, the mani dvipa. Now we've seen some of us may recognize this this gem, this mani gem, the Manipura, this, the, 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 the city the city of jewels, the Manipura chakra, the jeweled altar, the wish fulfilling trees representing our thoughts, the jewels and gems representing our thoughts. So the the lesson here, the, the teaching lesson here is that the power of our thoughts built upon our increasing sattvic purity, creates these inner manifestations as vessels, as receptacles for attunement to our Ishtadevata. Our thoughts have the power to invite the divine Atman into our awareness. So the power of our thoughts comes up again. Um, where the mind goes, the energy flows, as Dr. Ananda reminds us frequently. So highlighting a few experiences of progress along the way, and I'll go through this quickly, um, highlighting some within our inner experiences. As we progress with our pranayama, our newly inspired pranayama practice based on these teachings and, and, and our, our following of the yamas and the niyamas and, and our doing of our daily practices, increase within our inner experiences, increased periods of, of peace and, and awareness of peace and consciousness. We're, we're moving away from that front lead edge of, of that chariot horse into a more peaceful spot. Increased inner strengths result in confidence and vitality. Increased perceptions of internal energy flows, easier meditative experiences. We don't get overshadowed. We don't get disrupted by the ups and downs of life. Improved strengths of mental, emotional, physical health. Mood swings uh, are resolved. We lose interest in unhealthy habits. This is very helpful. I love this phrase, the velocity of the mind slows down. As we do our practice, as we strengthen that internal dharana, as, as some of that covering that's hiding the luminosity of the Atman is gradually moved away the velocity of the mind slows down. Uh, 
the, the, those, those, those whirlpools of the mind are starting to become under control. Increased physical health and vitality, the triggers that can cause anger dissipate. Impulsive reactive behaviors are replaced by actions rooted in clarity and wisdom. Luminosity of the Atman and Prajna, the highest wisdom. Luminosity shines forth when blessed by the higher self in the thoughtless state. Adhyatma, meaning that which is of the self itself, that highest self. This can be interpreted as the highest state of purity that exists. Now, this is the first of three verses from the Yoga Sutras, three of my favorite verses on, on that, that pragna and, and on the, the, the approach and the proximity of being with the Atman, being near the Atman. Uh, in the next verse, Vrittam Tatra Prajna. The highest wisdom is obtained in this state. At that point, when we are enshrined in this supreme experience, the highest wisdom, pragna, dawns. We can experience that reality of reality. The highest wisdom cannot dawn until the small individual egotistic I is exiled once and forever from our consciousness. Data, information, knowledge, even lower forms of wisdom may be possessed by the ego, but one can never obtain to that real pragna until the ego submits to the divine will. When this highest wisdom dawns, one finally knows all there is to know. This is a teaching from this sutra. This marks the end of limitation, bondage, distortion, and hallucination. Only pure universal wisdom shines in its own space and place. And the next of these three verses, This wisdom is beyond anything related to that which can be obtained through the senses. And this next quote on this teaching is from a beautiful, a wonderful uh, YouTube, an eight minute YouTube that Dr. Ananda created quite a few years ago. It, it, it's gotta be one of my favorites. And the quote of Dr. Ananda from this, on this teaching, when we, te when we can go beyond our own limited individuality, we start to tune into, tap into that beautiful pragna loka where we know all that is to be known, a beautiful state of being, definitely a state of being that is very much worth, more than worth giving up our ego for. May we all attain to that pragna loka. May we all realize the blessings we have to be born as a human, an opportunity to make this self effort the prusharta, to go through the process of dharma, artha, kama, attaining moksha, those four aims of life. And as Swamiji so beautifully told us, health and happiness are your birthright. Claim them, moksha, liberation, freedom, kaivalya is your goal. Attain it through yoga. May we all make his words come true in our own life. This is my wish for all of us in this beautiful yoga satsanga. Needless to say, I was very excited when I pulled that quote out of the, the, the recording recently. A brief point on the fact that, that, that this, these teachings on, on, on this highest wisdom, this pragna, shows up in other parts of the Yoga Sutras. So there's a reference for, for further study. Well, we're nearing the end of this presentation. We've got several more teachings, uh, but we're approaching the end. And it looks like we got an upgrade to our chariot. Uh, we've got uh, Lord Krishna and Arjuna guiding us on the Dharmic field of the Bhagavad Gita teachings. And we've got some teachings on Dharma, Atman, and Brahman. Dharma, Dharma is the spiritual law. Dharma refers to those underlying forces which sustain order in the entire universe. In our lives, swadharma, swadharma, personal dharma, increases through actions which are in harmony with these universal forces. 
So organizing my notes here, I've got a, a, a brief teaching to share on some key points here, starting with the question, where and when does the unmanifest manifest? One answer to this question, one important answer to this question involves the pranava, the primordial ohm vibration, as the first vibrations of Brahman, the first vibrations of creation <clears throat> at the start of our universe, the universe of our physical and celestial locus. We have the creation stories, teachings from multiple traditions that point to the primacy of sound vibration. But, and, 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 and this is wonderful and inspiring and important teachings, but I'll point out that the creation stories are about the past, but what about right now? The pranava is still here, it's still vibrating at some subtle esoteric border between, between here and there, between the manifest realms of our world and the transcendental Paramatman, the great Purusha, that pranava is still vibrating. Now the Rig Veda is also a creation story. It is said that the Rig Veda points us to the blueprints of creation. Blueprints of creation, wow. Such extraordinary blueprints would need to contain great knowledge, including knowledge of the universal forces of order, dharmic forces of order. So where would these blue, where might these blueprints of creation be? Perhaps these blueprints of creation relate to the pragna loka, the realm of universal wisdom and knowledge. We see in the Yoga Sutras, chapter one, verse 47, that we just highlighted, that when we attain the, an elevated purity and gain increased access to the luminosity of the Atman, we are led in the very next sutra verse, the very next Yoga Sutra verse, to that Rittambara Pragna, pointing us toward that universal wisdom, knowledge, and that realm of Pragna. We have the teaching here that we also have the teaching here that, that Atman is like a bindu related to the Maha Bindu. The Maha Bindu being that great cosmic point and, and our vocabulary breaks down. Our, our words are three dimensional and temporal and, and we're on the borderline of the transcendental, the non-physical, the non-three, the, the non-dual. So we have the teaching that the Atman is, is like a Bindu, related to that Maha Bindu. The Maha Bindu being that great cosmic point between the unmanifest of, and our physical and non-physical universe. So that link, that Bindu link within us can be within our reach through these practices, through these teachings, through the steady, sustained practice. There are teachings in the Mandukya Upanishad and in the Dhyana Bindu Upanishad that say, that teach us some of the similar topics of the Pragna Loka and teach that that Pragna Loka state of universal wisdom and unlimited knowledge is realized in states of deep, in a deep, in a state of consciousness of deep silence in the proximity of the Atman. The teaching in these is that the, in these states of deep silence, there is greater order. Does this order, does this greater order mean the forces of Rita, which was the earlier term in the earlier Vedas uh, that was, became more replaced by the more popular term, the Dharma, the universal law. Would this mean that the forces of Rita, the forces of Dharma are stronger in this realm of the Atman, in this realm of the Ritambara Pragna? So as we try to imagine this path to the Atman, our transformation from individuality to reunite with the Paramatman, we can create a vision for ourselves. And as we work to increase our sattvic purity through our daily practices of living yoga, we gain further access to that inner luminosity that has always been within us. As we seek harmony within Dharma, within and in all parts of our lives, which brings us back to this point on this slide about increasing our alignment with the Atman in, helps us increase alignment with Dharma, producing greater harmony and easier fulfillment 
of our sattvic goals. We have this same teaching. We, we, well, we, we, move, we move on to the, the highlighting the, the swat, Swatharma. In these last couple of slides today, um, swat, Swadharma, the personal Dharma, is that path of action that best works to resolve your personal Dharma. And the popular teaching that's, that, that, that's uh, somewhat well known from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter three, verse 35. It is better to strive in one's own Dharma than to succeed in the Dharma of another. Nothing is ever lost in following one's own Dharma, but competition in another's Dharma brings fear and insecurity. So through that swadhyaya, that inner in, in, in introspection, that, that, that self-reflection, that attuning to ourselves, we aspire to find our dharmic path. Uh, the Uddhava Gita teaches that increased sattva enables dharmic support. Sattva arises by association with sattvic things. Dharma, Atman, and Brahma. How to increase sattva, increase dharma, increase our opportunities for Atman, Darshana, and align with Dharma. A partial list, just to highlight a few. Of course, we start with the foundation, the Yamas and the Niyamas. The yoga practices of purification, Pranayama. Yoga practices focused on spiritual goals. Practices on in, involving inner attunement, that Pratyahara, the Dharana, Dhyana. The Pratyahara, which is enabled by our, our, inner, our previous work in purification. It's strengthened by, by, the, by our, our prior work. The ability to, uh, for us to have that internal dharana is strengthened by our prior work. Uh, the pratyahara we didn't spend much time on, it's so, so important in terms of shifting the expenditure of energy that are going external through our senses to that inner attunement. And when we do that, the, the inner illumination, there's more energy in our inner field of perception. It empowers our inner awakenings. It empowers our inner vision of, 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 of the, those awakenings. And, and that f greatly facilitates our progress. The daily sadhana, the harmony between the koshas, the lifestyle behaviors to increase sattvic purity. The people and places we associate with, we become the company we keep. Didak, discernment, where we put our attention. The energies we ingest through books, television, movies. People think of a healthy diet in terms of food, physical food, which is very important. But the, what we ingest in other ways is, is, is a very important. Moving on to the concluding slide. Concluding with some additional measures of progress along the way. As our thoughts and desires are increasingly sattvic, increasingly aligned with Dharma, as has been highlighted, the deeper meditation, meditative experiences come more easily. Our goals meet less resistance and are more easily accomplished. The right choices and actions come more easily. The teaching of the means gather around sattva. The means, the means is referring to the resources to accomplish our goals, gather around sattva. This is a beautiful teaching. And it's, it's when we are increasing our alignment with dharma, our goals and objectives are more in keeping with dharma. So we, we receive a positive response from the universe. The, the wind is at our back. The, the way is made clear. There's the synchronicity. That pragna, that highest wisdom, will flow through you when you have achieved that balance after having persevered with the correct practices for as long as it takes. And a wonderful quote from the Ramayana about Dharma as a foundational component of life. Prosperity arises from Dharma. Happiness arises, emerges from Dharma. Everything is obtained by means of Dharma. 
for the world has Dharma as its essence. And so with that, I bring thanks to Dr. Anandaji. I bring thanks to this community, to the CIDRA team. I, you may have noticed that I enjoy being a cheerleader for these great teachings. Uh, uh, that's my favorite definition of my role as a cheerleader for these great teachings. Um, and, and, and one point of clarification, I've, I've referenced lots of, of Upanishads. Um, I don't wanna give the wrong impression. I'm, I'm a beginner student of the Upanishads. Uh, I happen to have a lot of references to the Upanishads because this is one of my favorite topics. So I seek out my favorite topics that inspire me. Um, so I just thought I'd add that as a footnote. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sri Bharata, for that very, very enlightening journey. An enlightening journey through the maze, the maze that prevents us from knowing ourselves. And all the obscuration that is there, all the asuchi that is there that needs to be cleaned out, worked out, so that finally we can see that which is already there within us and connect to it. I haven't ever heard such a detailed expression. Mm -hmm. I would say I've never heard such a detailed expression of Ishwara Pranidhana, Atman Pranidhana in this context and it seemed to me like, you know, a master's dissertation <laughs> on this topic. You know, it had gone into such depth. And I think anyone who's watching it would have gained a lot. And I think this needs to be watched many, many times <laughs> because there are multiple layers that are there. <laughs> and it will be available on the site uh, Facebook page whether it is streaming live and then later it will be available on our site or YouTube channel. So it will be available for everyone for free download as usual. And we want that it should be explored because this is the depth of what yoga is. And <laughs> what I liked is you had given actually a very beautiful roadmap. What are the practices that can be done? What are the methodologies that can be followed and so it is not just an intellectual exercise, but it can be put into practice. I think this is the greatest message that is needed now, that these are not people think jnana yoga, bhakti yoga, these are intellectual exercises. They are not intellectual. They can be brought into practical living. And the key message that came through is by living yoga. I think that is the key message that is underlined many, many times Shri Bharata in his presentation today. Marvelous presentation and a few comments from our panelists before we go on to the next topic for today. So I invite uh, uh, Sangeeta, Shailaja and Dr. Rama Reddy if they would like to make a few comments. Namaste Dr. Nanda, Namaste um, distinguished fellow seekers on the path and colleagues. Uh, ah, Shri Bharata, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I really, uh, first of all, as a scholar, as a scholar, I truly appreciate the detail, the specific quotations, uh, the, the Devanagari transliteration, translation. There's so much depth and so much respect. So first of all, at the level of the rational, intellectual, academic, uh, study. Thank you for that. <laughs> but also, most importantly <laughs> to me, uh, this presentation was both humbling and uh, a relief. It was humbling because my ego got shrewd. <laughs> you know how oftentimes when we present, we think we have to come up with great ideas or great quotes by our own ego and so on. So it's very humbling because actually we don't have to invent anything. 
in fact, the Ishwara Pranidhana was contained in how you present it. And this is such a brilliant, it's brilliant and very subtle, but you surrender to these higher teachings by allowing them to talk through you, right? Instead of you talking about them, which is, you know, what my ego often does. So it was very humbling. Thank you for that. Thank you for modeling that for me. Um, and then it was a relief because rather than coming up with grand ideas about yoga or how to you know, teach yoga or all of that, you know, that can happen when one is fairly new to yoga like me, actually everything is already there. And so it's a relief because all we need to do is to actually search and create this beautiful comparative um, network of wisdom teachings that you did, because you didn't just go with one teaching, with one teacher, with one lineage. You constantly bridged the teachings and the scriptures and that's, so that's the effort. That's the effort, not the ego that needs to come up with contemporary understandings or whatever. The effort is to make these alive, these teachings alive today. And the relief, so it's like, Abhyasa and Vairagya in your presentation. So your presentation provided, ah, <laughs> you did exactly what you were sharing with us in the presentation. It's like this constant, um, ah, okay. I'm getting emotional about this. So thank you so much. And what a teachable moment for me as a teacher. What a teachable moment. Thank you so, so, so much for your work. Thank you and your example. Thank you. Thank you. It, it's easier to be a cheerleader for these great teachings because we don't have to reinvent it. The great teachings are there. When we've got the quality translations That's right. authored by people with sufficient consciousness to recognize the teachings, um, and which is a, a key point. Thank fantastic, you. Thank you fantastic you. reminder for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, uh, any words from our other panelists, please? That was amazing, that was amazing. <laughs> okay, I would just like to say that uh, I was uh, really gripped by every slide. Like, I don't know which one, fr like from the word go, I was completely gripped. And I was busy trying to write notes and then I had to remind myself, you know, that the video would be available later than I like and exactly like Dr. Ananda said, this is a presentation that I have to watch over and over and over again. So a few words that came to my mind truly was that it was so meticulous. It was so in depth. And what I also loved about it, actually Dr. Ananda stole some of my lines, but what I really loved about it was, though it was so uh, philosophical in its context, you brought it down to practicality. You gave people ideas of things that they could do, how they could bring it to their life. And in the end, you also gave about what are the benefits that they could see because most human minds need to see some benefits of what they do. So you brought it down right from the highest order of things and, you know, like creation and the how your pranava and, you know, cosmic consciousness, how it came about, you brought it down to, and I truly love, this is a topic that's very close to my heart about the Atman and how the divinity exists in the heart of all and so many different you know texts and scriptures so in fact I was busy scribbling down all the references so that I can go and look it up later but you gave all of that and then you also came down to okay how is this going to benefit your life right break it down to exactly how it's going to you know affect our everyday life you know our inner journeys as well as our practical living so it was so complete it was so as a favorite word I think is wholesome in its appeal to both uh, people who are just searching for intellectual uh, information, but as well as people who want to know what can I do with this information at the end of it. But truly I was gripped by every slide and uh, I consider it an extreme honor that I could actually sit here and watch this. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, Ramaradi sir, few words from your side. May I speak sir? Yes. You're 
voice is not audible, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Your sir. voice is not audible, sir. Mine is audible, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Namaste, sir. Uh, really wonderful, and uh, I just do not understand how um, um, uh, Paramacharya has selected the names for the people like Bharata, Padma, Sangeeta, uh, Jnana Sundari. This type of uh, whether he perceived the personalities and kept the name. Or they have uh, assumed the names and they have molded their personalities to, to that way. Really wonderful. And uh, always, whenever I see you, all Gitananda family people, unassuming, and also the humility as Sarv tells, that thing I, I noticed. Just, I mean, you live like Bharata only, always, I mean, I think. And uh, uh, like, like Bharata for Iswara Pranidhana, uh, he lived the life of uh, Sri Rama Pranidhana. So similarly, I think uh, you are living that way only, that life you have depicted in your speech. So wonderful speech. And uh, see, we all the people in Maslow's words, we go up to such a level like uh, esteem needs. We all crave for uh, recognition as uh, Dr. Sangeeta was telling. We go to such a level for our ego flattening. We do certain things like whether people are recognizing or not, whether media is covering or not, so many things and all. And above that self-actualization, maybe that may not be appropriate word, but such a level, very few people go. We all people, we buy two-way ticket. We go and come back. But some people buy only one-way ticket. They go to the Paramatma and they don't come back at all. So such people, I think, uh, uh, Sar used a word called Jada, which is not there in you, but uh, Bharata is there, and you are like Jada Bharata, who are at the verge of the thing, like Jeevan Muktas and Prakriti Layas, uh, who just live here to enlighten us. And of course, uh, you are the person really who is following that one. I have got a small doubt the difference between Iswara Pranidhana and Prapati. Iswara Pranidhana is used mostly by Advaita people that it is part of Brahman. Atma is nothing but part of Brahman only. Uh, so, Purnam, that Purnam, this Purnam, this Purnam is part of that Purnam. Whereas, Prapati is mostly used by Dvaita people. Bhakti, Prapati, Saranagati and all. There, he is there, he takes care of everything, we need not ask for that thing. So, uh, any difference between these two things are uh, synonymous. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Rao. I'm ready. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning um, Abraham Maslow. Uh, when I, uh, in, in the spirit of, of a salutogenesis, um, when in the early 70s, when I was an undergraduate uh, in psychology classes, and I discovered the great positive teachings of, of Abraham Maslow, I thought to myself, wow, there's hope for psychiatry. There, there's hope for well, let's look at, at, at healthy examples of, of, of you, the human potential, not only focus on the, the, the illness model. Uh, so thank you. It's a, it, it touches it full circle for myself back, back for the early 70s, before the term salutogenesis was, was, pop, was, was phrased. Thank you. I, uh, that was wonderful how life goes in a big circle and we come back, it's spiraling constantly come back to the same place, but with a new approach. And uh, when we talk about Atman Pranidhana, Ishwara Pranidhana, initially it starts off with that similar approach of the Atma is there, I am here. But then from that approach, it finally ends up that we are the Atma. And that is why finally it becomes Aham Brahmasmi. But initially there's a lot of Dvaitam. God is there, God blesses me. I get close to God. I will sit on the lap of God. This is a common approach. But then the most important teaching of yoga is you become Ishwara. So I think there it's, it's part of the same journey. I won't, uh, they're just different stages in the same journey, I think, uh, from that perspective, Rama Yes, sir. Uh, I just have a 
request from Devasena who wanted to say something. She's been sitting here by my side. So, yes. Namaste, Ji. Namaste, everyone. It was a wonderful uh, satsang, actually, to listen to your uh, talk. And um, as uh, Shalaja Man was telling, it's, uh, you brought the essence to everyone for the, all the levels. However, Swamiji is doing when he was teaching, he is not really teaching, he is the giving the life to everyone, how to live, how to get to the moksha. So he is showing the path in Kamdisam Madam, he opened for all the categories, all the different groups, they were teaching Amaji and Swamiji. And uh, from the higher level, who can think what they are doing, also the level who cannot even think what they are doing. They are to the extreme, they were teaching all the different uh, groups. Uh, so they could take the message and they could take the essence to the, all the levels like that. Your uh, teaching is going for everyone and uh, equally you can take that message. That's, uh, it's uh, very great, great in you that, uh, because the, as we say, the, the message comes, uh, Amaji says, let the noble thoughts come from the every, every direction. As we come the, get the word from the Vedas, like that, the Vedas even it take the essence. It like a, you are like a vahana, the tool to the Vedas to take the message. So I feel I feel like that. So like the, like Veda Vyasas, like a, we we say Avaya and all many Avayas were there. So like that was one person when we are talking about them. Like a Patanjali also same person, but they they feel many many of the aspects in him. So maybe different people like that they started to feel sometimes the same people, many, many of them maybe in the same name. So like that, uh, they, uh, that essence also, it will choose the person, I think, that to, through, through, through who I can reach the, I can take the, I can reach to the universe. Like that, so I think the Vedas and uh, I mean the, all the higher energies chosen you to take the message through you. So that's what I feel actually. So it's uh, very, very great to, I mean, uh, very, uh, very, very greatness that, uh, uh, I can feel that uh, how, how much you are talking about that Atma, Dharma, everything. So I remember Amaji, how much she think about the Dharma, you have to do, you do your Dharma, uh, you have to do your Dharma. Even everyday life, I, I, I used to think uh, what I'm not doing, Dharma, Amaji always remaining uh, like that, I used to think. So how much you understood, I mean, uh, that because of your greatness, that great things you can understand and uh, take the great things to the great people to the all the people even ordinary can understand easily that much you are doing the seva to the teaching so it's really uh, when i think the, you are the vahana of the teachings that uh, really uh, very very happy thing to think because as ducks are doing and you are i mean not doing you are all being in that so that the essence can pa pass to pass through all of you like that rama and uh, i mean our vigilante uh, like that, when I see all the aged, uh, I mean, categories, people, even though ducks are younger to all, but still, because he's double in the in his age, actually, what he could observe, I mean, how can, uh, I mean, bring out from him like that. So again, other, other category, when I see Shaila Jamanan, Sangeeta, Meena, Meena Ji, everyone, when I see, uh, again, already other, uh, other, I mean, categories going on to take the message to continue. So it's very, 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 uh, very, very special. Something Shresham, we say. So very nice. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Devasena, for expressing what we all feel. And I think to be a vehicle of the pure consciousness and the teachings is so vital. So we thank Sri Bharata for this excellent presentation. And there is a, just a question from Tarakeshwar. And I think basically a simple answer for now, rather than going on to another two hour session, is that uh, Atman and Ishwara, we are perceiving as a similar concept with the di uh, distinctions. So they are similar yet with distinctions. And we could say like, you know, we have synonyms, but synonyms are not exactly the same. So. I think that is one way I would uh, just take it at a short way before I go into my presentation today. And uh, 
I'm going to try to get through a presentation that is uh, <coughs> um, highlighting the work we are doing at CITER. So yesterday, Dr. Meena has given a very detailed presentation, which makes my job easier on that count. And hence, uh, I have decided to bring a few more aspects into this presentation today to uh, give a bigger picture of the whole thing. I hope you can see my screen. Okay. Just rearrange my screen a bit. Yes. So basically today, the topic I'm going to be presenting for the next while is on CITER as a role model for the holistic integration of yoga therapy and modern medicine. And before I begin with the presentation, I offer my salutations to the Guru Parampara. Om Tad Parampara Vidmahe Jnana Lingeshwaraya Dhimahe Tanno Guru Prachodayate Om Om Yoga Mahishrakta Swami Gita Nanda Giri Guru Maharaj Ki Jai So in today's uh, presentation, we are looking at CITER as a role model for this integration that we are talking about. And as was explained yesterday, the CITER has been functioning at Sri Balaji Vidya Peet, which is a deemed to be university, which has been in the top 100 of the national ranking for the past five years, ever since the ranking started. And our focus, again, has been said so many times is salutogenesis. And salutogenesis basically is the way we like to go forward. So when we talk about our topic, we are talking about a journey that moves from what used to be called CAM, complementary and alternative medicine, to what is today called traditional complementary and integrative medicine. So there's a journey where alternative was you or me. This then changed to complementary where it can be, well, you and me, and then integrative, which is us. So you and me became, so you or me became you and me, and that became us. So this is the journey. In this journey, where does yoga fit in when we talk about integrative medicine? Well, we have our traditional yogic literature that goes back into time immemorial. And then we have the modern scientific approach. And where do these two come together? Where is the interaction? Well, the International Association of Yoga Therapists, which is having their sitha currently going on simultaneously, has tried its best to create this type of movement. And we have certified yoga therapists, a global yoga therapy day, a PubMed indexed journal coming out. You know, a lot of integration has happened. A lot of movements have happened. And a dozen amazing books have come out on how yoga therapy can come into modern medical system as an integrative basis, including the amazing book by my dada, uh, Dilip Sarkar on yoga therapy, Ayurveda and Western medicine. One of the best textbooks we have today, the principles and practice of yoga and healthcare. And then our own work, which has been coming out through many of the pioneers in different fields here. This morning, I did a quick search because after listening to Rama Reddy sir yesterday, I said I better be up to date. So I went on to PubMed and I said, Give me the results for yoga therapy. This was this morning. And it said 6,205 results come up when I just put yoga therapy. This is not for yoga. This is not for asana, pranayama. If I start to include all those terms, you would have a much bigger number. But just the term yoga therapy and 6,205 PubMed gold standard uh, papers are found. That is where things are moved today. 
Now, Saita was started on 1st November and we are looking at three angles, educating future yoga therapists, helping patients recover from their illnesses, and scientifically researching the hows and whys of yoga. So as was said yesterday, about 70,000 people have benefited. We have courses going on, publications, CME, and all the other stuff going on. We are truly blessed because we have an amazing advisory board. If you look at this, it's the who's who of uh, yoga, yoga therapy, and uh, <laughs> uh, modern medicine uh, with uh, some amazing people from all over the globe who are supporting us in so many ways. Our own team, which keeps on expanding, but you know Meena, you know Daya, you know me, and well, a lot of stuff is coming out of there. What is the vision and mission of CITER? Where does it come in? The innovative integration, <coughs> the innovative integration of the traditional yoga therapy with modern medical science through a conscious focus on cellulogenesis to enhance the holistic health and wellness. This is basically the framework in which we are working, our scope of practice. And the focus on health, cellulogenesis, moving from pathogenesis to cellulogenesis has always been part of our work from day one. Because cellulogenesis, as described by Antonovsky, and the other day, Sedhu Raman sir pointed this out very beautifully, we all have stress. Nobody can escape stress. Only the people who die can escape it because they have no more stress. As long as you are alive, every living being is bound by the laws of stress. It's going to be there. Now, are you going to let it break you or make you? The choice is yours. Will the stress break you or make you? Break you, pathogenic, H negative, loss of health. Make you, cellulogenic, and you become a better version of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, financially, spiritually. All the leaves you want to add to it, you can add to it. So whenever we are talking to the modern medical community, they say, well, why should we have yoga? As Ramaradi mentioned yesterday, it is an experiential science, a dynamic state of health is a byproduct of yoga. So the dynamic state of health is a byproduct. It is not the goal of yoga. Goal of yoga is liberation, kaivalya. But it is a byproduct. And the father of neurosurgery in India, Dr. B. Ramamurthy, a great yogi himself, has said it reorients the functional hierarchy of the entire nervous system. So what happens? It is preventive. In, it is preventive in nature, as Silvamurthy sir said. Preventive, you know, all the uh, primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary prevention we heard the other day with Vigilani sir, related to stress. And I think the most important selling point for yoga and modern medicine, because this is what we have to do here. At CITER, we have to bridge. And if CITER model is going to be brought into other places, I have to teach you the tricks of the trade. So how do you promote it? How do you sell it? Well, yoga has promotive, preventive, and maybe curative potential, first point. It is a safe. If people say, oh, what will happen if you fall down from the headstand? Well, you could fall down walking down the stairs. It doesn't mean you stop walking down the stairs. What it means is you learn how to do the headstand from the competent yoga teacher or yoga therapist. So what we need to understand here, if you don't like the word safe, you can say relatively safe. That's another way to use your linguistic freedom. But the most important selling point is non-pharmacological therapy. So here you are not adding on the drug burden. You are not adding on polypharmacy. You are not creating more interactions between the different drugs because it is non-drug, which means yoga can be integrated with all systems of medicine. Now you cannot integrate Ayurveda and modern medicine because both use their own forms of drugs. You cannot integrate homeopathy with modern medicine because both have totally different approaches to giving a pill. One says give the most potent, the other says go down to the dilution. So you, they become alternative. Same thing with Siddha. But yoga being non-pharmacological, it can easily get through it. And so it becomes an effective lifestyle adjuvant, another selling point. An effective lifestyle adjuvant 
to reduce drug dosage and improve the quality of life of your health seekers. The biggest selling point is, again and again studies have shown yoga improves quality of life, QOL. It is helpful in preventing and managing psychosomatic stress-based disorders and virtually all disorders, especially of non-communicable nature, come into that. You may be able to reduce, eliminate the drug dosage or dependence in again many conditions. But what I like to tell people is the yoga therapist must work in tandem with, many, uh, with medical doctors when managing patients with medical treatment. If somebody is receiving medical treatment, please work in a collaborative team. It is creating an integrative healthcare team where yoga therapist will be an integral component. Not that you know you do it on your own. So there has to be teamwork there. I'm always reminded of a statement from Plato. The treatment of the part shouldn't be attempted without a treatment of the entirety. The treatment of the body without treating the mind and soul is a useless waste of time. Now that's a long time ago, okay? And it is applicable today also. We need to look at both. And this is where when you look at how yoga can come into the modern healthcare system, what we start to realize, lifestyle modifications, rehabilitation, coping skills, healthy diet, relaxation, one of the greatest contributions of yoga to healthcare will be in relaxation because it is non-drug based relaxation. And we don't have it in modern medicine. We don't have such methodology and yoga can fill that lacuna. Expenditure, you can be cost effective and it is anti-aging. People want anti-aging, yoga is a very good place to be there. Psychotherapy, the mind and beyond, in women's health, all across the spectrum of the woman's life. And in research, there are so many places where things can come together, basic applied research and literary also. It has been shown that yoga modifies coronary artery disease Risk factors, it can reverse heart disease. Denonation is amazing work. Patients with respiratory disorders have shown improvement. Therapeutic tool in children who have intellectual disabilities. Potential in metabolic syndrome, diabetes, obesity, you name it. And in psychiatry, obsessive compulsive disorders and perceived stress. I think across the yoga research, uh, you know, spectrum, if you look at all the studies, we always will find perceived stress is reduced through the practice of yoga. And if you can reduce the perception of stress, you reduce the whole stress response. And anxiety and depression. It is very interesting. You know, what happens is that often in modern medicine, if somebody has anxiety, you give them a type of drug. If somebody has depression, you give them another type of drug. Now, what happens is the one will not work on the other. What you use for anxiety will not work in depression. What you use in depression will not work in anxiety. But people who have depression may also have anxiety. And this is where recent research at CITER with the team at psychiatry, what we have found is yoga as an adjuvant therapy in patients of depression helped reduce the depression, okay, but also help anxiety reduction in that group of patients receiving yoga. So what you are doing is you are helping to reduce polypharmacy. Polypharmacy means poly side effects. And it is absolutely a beautiful uh, teamwork can happen there. Now, a lot of analysis has come out and there are a huge amount of publications coming up, more and more randomized control trials which is the gold standard. And what are the top three disorders addressed? Mental health, cardiovascular disease, and respiratory disease. These are the three places where yoga can definitely fit into that integrative team, no doubt about it at all. Because if you look at yoga therapy, it is addressing three components, three domains, the body, the mind, and the spirit. At the body level, if you look at it, create healing. This is somebody else's slide. I've given the attribution to them, Indeed Care. 
I would have used the word induce healing, not create healing, because you are not creating something new. You are inducing self-healing and restoration of function. So at the body level, induce the healing or supplement the healing and restore function. At the level of the mind, induce healing and reduce suffering. And at the uh, level of the spirit, reduce suffering and create community. What a beautiful, you know, it's, it's going across the domains. It's like if you put a Venn diagram, yoga is getting into all the other circles. And it's a very beautiful image when it comes to mind that way. And all of it is because of psychoneuroimmunology, the new term for what we called Adi Vyadi 5,000 years ago. Adi Vyadi is Yoga Vashishta term 5,000 years ago. The modern term is psychoneuroimmunology, where the nervous system, the endocrine and the immune system are interacting. This is of paramount importance during the pandemic. Because the stress comes in and it triggers this whole thing and they all go, all the three balls start running here, there and everywhere, hitting each other. Now, you know what? Yoga does exactly the opposite, but using the same pathway. So stress uses the same pathway, nervous system, endocrine system, and immune system to create havoc, wreak havoc. Yoga uses the same methodology, the same tools, but to give harmony and healing. What an amazing tool we have in our hand. Because the whole stress response leading to the allostatic load and disease is all based on perceived stress. You can see that perceived stress. I'm highlighting that. This is where it all starts. If you don't perceive something as stressful, there is no stress response. If you perceive something as stressful, you are bound to the stress response like you are bound to the wheels of karma. What do you need to change? Perception of stress. How can you change it? That is where yoga comes in as a potent antidote and vaccine against stress. And again, research has shown, if you look at the stress pathway, the cascade, all these stars, you can see some stars at different points here, cortisol, renin, epinephrine, heart rate, cytokines, uh, dyslipidemia, blood glucose, insulin, all these places are where yoga has been shown to have an influence. So, so many points in this cascade. One is you stop the perception. Along with that, all the components in this cascade at so many places, yoga is coming in and trying to rectify the fault lines that are there. So one is you are doing root cause analysis and treatment, root canal treatment, if you want to call it that, addressing the Adi. But then you're also looking at the Vyadi and the different components that are coming. So it is multidimensional approach happening. And this is where Streeter showed that stress induces autonomic imbalance, where the parasympathetic goes down and sympathetic goes up. Now, what does yoga do the opposite? Sympathetic comes down, parasympathetic is brought up to create balance. And that allostatic load, which is like an elephant sitting on your back, that can be reduced and hence you reduce the chronic stress and all the psychosomatic stress disorders. So if you look at it as a balance on one side parasympathetic, the other side sympathetic, you are constantly trying to find balance between them because parasympathetic will help rehabilitation and helps to manifest the healing from within. And this is where yoga keeps that balance. It induces what is called Sympathovagal balance, autonomic balance. And the key, relaxation. Because it is an essential prerequisite for healing. Without relaxation, you cannot heal. When you are stressed, you cannot heal. And this is where the relaxation response. The other day, when Balaji was presenting Madan Mohan sir's talk, he mentioned Benson and how Benson brought about this term relaxation response. Well, yoga's greatest contribution to healthcare, I believe, will be through the field of relaxation and inducing the relaxation response. My dear Sadhya Kalsa from Harvard has given a beautiful schematic how the yoga practices, the postures, the breathing, the relaxation, the meditation, all of them can work on different domains. The domain of fitness, 
the fitness domain, the domain of self-regulation, the domain of awareness, and the domain of spirituality. And what do they do? The whole of global human functionality is enhanced. This slide itself is worth a one hour lecture. It has everything in it. It is the best summary I have ever seen and I always use it with credit to my dear Sadhir Kalsa. What an inspirational uh, yogi doctor he is. Again, it has been same thing. Reduce the sympathetic, enhance the parasympathetic. And words are coming in now. Enhanced ins insulin sensitivity. You break down the insulin resistance. Again, perceived stress is brought in. You decrease, in other words, nowadays is oxidative stress. Free radical damage. All of that is brought down. It has been shown by so many studies. And endothelial dysfunction is one of the main causes of so many conditions. Well, you can reduce that by enhancing the endothelial function. So that which is not functional is brought into functional. That which is hyperfunctional is brought down to functional. Ultimately, what is yoga doing? Bringing us into a state of harmonious balance. Performance improvement has been documented. So many studies have shown improvement in physical performance. Similarly, in people who have breathing disorders, dyspnea, how the changes can be there. I'm just giving a few examples. This is available on SlideShare and the video will also be there. Because the talk is not about this. I'm just giving you a framework. We have documented evidence. As Sri Bharata was saying, what is already there? We have to just be a cheerleader of it. I am a cheerleader of the amazing work done in research by the pioneers. But most people don't know it. I did a survey on you know, how much do yoga teachers and therapists know about research? And the results were totally disappointing. It is a PubMed published paper. You can find it. A survey on yoga research. Very few people actually were even reading up on the latest research. The only source was from headlines in newspapers. Now, never trust headlines in newspapers. Huh? They say something and the research study is something else. Very few are going into it. It's important to see what is the work being done. Build on it, express it, cheer it up. And similarly in pregnancy, where you find both the maternal and the fetal outcomes, labor pain goes down, maternal comfort is better, and the birth outcomes are better. This type of work has been done. This is about 13 years ago the work has been done. Why we are not spreading it to our medical community? Why our yoga therapists are not speaking the language. If you want to integrate yoga therapy in a modern medical healthcare system, you need to speak the language. You need to speak the language. Otherwise, there'll be a communication barrier. So we need to understand this and take it forward. Cancer. Immediately people say, oh, can yoga cure cancer? Well, it can reduce fatigue. That is a major issue in people who have cancer. It can improve the general health quality of life, reduce the depression, and improve physical performance. There are also other studies. Sleep is better. Quality of life is better. You know, that quaternary prevention that Bijlani sir was talking about. So important in terminal conditions that we bring that in. And again, back pain. How yoga can work on it. It reduces the physical impairment. Impacts positively the cognitive appraisal. It impacts positively the affect and stress and improves the neuroendocrine, cytoneuroimmunology. These are some mechanisms that are there. Again, 11 years ago, why are we not talking about this? We need to talk about it if we are to create that integration. This is what we have been doing at CITER. These are some of the studies we did. We shared that. How does Chandra Nadi, left nostril breathing, Sukha Pranayama, equal and, you know, equal in and out, Savitri Pranayama, 2121 and the Pranava, how it can help in people who have hypertension, people who can, who have diabetes, give them the data, express it, and then suddenly you have built a bridge. You have to gain the confidence of the medical professional. Then they'll start referring the patient to you. Not if you put up a board saying, I will cure it all. If you say, I will cure it all, you, it means you will cure nothing. Because anybody who thinks I'll cure it all means they don't know the limitations. You have to know your strength. 
but you have to be very, very aware of your limitations. What is your scope of practice? Never forget it as a yoga therapist. And this is why at Saita, with all of this coming into our mind, we have created this center where Joseph Lipage, what an amazing yogi he is. And when he came to India and he did a video series of different centers, this is what he said. There are many centers where you can get a yoga degree. Attend a yoga therapy session or find yoga research being undertaken. However, to have all three happening in one place, that is the key. All three happening in one place is surely innovative. This center is indeed a role model that combines the best of the East with that of the West. This is the type of feedback we have been working on because of the approach. We didn't go and say, we are the yoga therapists, send us anybody, we'll cure them. They'll not send a single patient to you. We have to be aware of it. There is a language to be spoken. And that is why with OPD consultations, individual and group sessions, master health checkup, and we go into the inpatient ward. The psychiatry patients used to come to CITER, but then suddenly a few of them will disappear. You never know when they'll abscond. So then we said, rather than let them come to CITER, we will go to psychiatry. So we go to the ward and the sessions are in the ward itself. You give it to the uh, patients and their caretakers, uh, they say, can I also do? The nurses join in, the doctors join in. This is how you build a rapport. This is how you build a team. And what type of findings in orthopedics? We had an anesthetist, senior anesthetist who had back pain. He couldn't do his job. Through the yoga, he could go back to his job and have that healthy. He's become one of our best uh, recommenders. Housewife with neck pain, back pain, so common, you reduce it. And in our silver citizens, increased mobility. One of our former vice chancellors of Pondicherry University, he said, yoga gives us turn ability. He said, as we age, we become so fixed. When I want to turn, my whole body turns. I cannot turn my neck or head. He says, yoga gives us that turn ability. What a beautiful uh, term for that. In psychiatry, we have seen suicide prevention, alcohol de-addiction, yoga plays a great role, anxiety reduction, mood stabilization, enhanced self-esteem, confidence, and decreased loneliness. These are the findings we have got from our patient feedback. In general medicine, decreased dosage and hypertension, and avoidance of drugs in pre-hypertension, weight loss and obesity, better sugar control, glycemic control, in subclinical hypothyroidism, we have seen change and drug dosage can come down in established cases. These are what we have found happening. In dermatology, where now Daya is doing his PhD on this topic now, it came from a patient. The patient was resistant, psoriasis. They were resistant to the treatment. The treatment was not working for them. And someone said, do yoga. They came to the yoga session, started doing it and the drug started working for that individual. What a beautiful happening where a drug resistant patient became responsive by adding yoga to the protocol. Again, healthier pregnancy, uh, decrease in postpartum blues. Uh, so many places yoga has worked. And Meena talked about our silver citizens, special children, emotional stability, feel good factor. You want to feel good. You want to feel yourself and creating a positive peer pressure with the teamwork. Enhance zest for life. I think these are amazing feedbacks we have got. You can see the beautiful smile on that lady's face as we are helping her stretch a bit. And give a good stretch and feel better. A wonderful work being done with so many other people. Here you can see Vidya Shri in the uh, palliative ward. What beautiful work was done in palliative ward well, just being with the person would make such a difference. Again, the children with special needs, what a beautiful work going on there. And going out into the village health centers, going out into camps. This one photo here is of our waiting place while people register to you know, come into the hospital and we go there and we give them a session while they're sitting there waiting to get registered. And for everybody who says, oh, what about religion? Here is an amazing man. He was a devout Muslim. Came with half his lung removed because of a lymphoma. And the cancer specialist sent him saying, you know, help him 
you know, breathe a bit better. And when I talked to him, he said, I said, you know, what do you expect from yoga? One of the first questions I asked people at CITER, what do you expect from yoga? You should know the expectation of the care seeker. If you don't know the expectation, what are you trying to fulfill? So one of the first questions, what do you expect from yoga? And he said, you know, doctor, I want to do my daily prayers to pray to my God. He says, because of this operation and surgery, I'm not able to do it. He said, all I want to do is to be able to pray my God. And after a certain number of sessions, when he met me, you can see the smile on his face as he thanks us. He said, now I can do it. I am at peace with myself. I know I'm going to die because of this cancer and all. But he said, I am ready to die because I know I am in tune with my God now. That is what comes. That is the type of transformation we find and so many examples. So don't tell me, oh, you know, there are religious issues. It's the way you present it. It is the way you deal with people. Uh, you, don't, you don't put it out there in the face and, you know, hit people with a sledgehammer. You have to deal with surgical tools in surgery, not a sledgehammer. What are some of the research works? 130 plus papers now. And what we have seen in essential hypertension, work in psychiatry ward, finding peace, work with chronic kidney disease. What happens to medical professionals, health professionals who are staying awake the whole night on duty? They have sleep deprivation. How can you help them by giving a short relaxation? What happens with people who have lung disorders? How can you help them breathe better? What can you do with mothers and babies, maternal and fetal cardiovascular parameters? How people who are going in for angiography, and they have been said, oh, you have a heart problem. You have to do an angiography. They're so stressed. How you can combine music and yoga therapies and find a reduction in the anxiety? How you can enhance children who have autism spectrum disorder in people who have diabetes? How you can improve the lung function? One of the first works by Dr. Balaji. That is amazing work. Nobody knows. They say, oh, diabetes, eyes get affected. The uh, nerves get affected. Kidney gets affected. Everything gets affected, including your lungs. It is called diabetic lung. Google it, diabetic lung and yoga. And the first study from CITA, thanks to Dr. Balaji's MPhil thesis. And while doing that, we came upon another study. I'll tell you in a few moments. Chronic rhinosinusitis. The ENT department said, we don't know what to do. So can you do something? We did Brahmari. Amazing results. Uh, amazing results when you add Brahmari to the treatment. And children who have autism spectrum, how can you enhance dental health? Again, it's not just with modern medicine. With modern dentistry, we are working. Recently, a study we have published on root canal treatment and the anxiety be before it. The children with autism, they are not able to have good dental hygiene. They are given the tools, the educational tools, but cannot understand it. When you add yoga to the mix, they can understand the tools better and dental hygiene becomes better because the learning capacity has been enhanced. What a beautiful innovation is coming in there. And as I told you with depression, what did we find along with depression? Anxiety also was being tackled when you add yoga as Ajuvant. We are not saying yoga alone. We are saying yoga with modern medicine, Ajuvant. And work by, by Kian, Ajuvant yoga therapy on craving. You can reduce the craving in people who are going through a de-addiction program. One of the biggest issues is craving. Again, they work on diabetic lung. We found it also protects your kidneys. So along with your lung, your kidneys are also being protected by this type of work. And again, we have done a lot of work with the silver citizens, how their neurological function is improved by reaction time, neuromuscular function, and reduction in the severity of autism has been again documented, Achyutan's work, which we are working on. And this latest one on yogic relaxation on biopsychosocial parameters in people who are going in for root canal treatment, endodontic therapy. And what I like about this study is two of the greatest Tamil literature figures a part of my authorship in this. Because Akshaya, her family name is Thiruvalluvan. Thiruvalluvan is the 
codifier of the Tirukkural. So her name is Akshaya Tiruvalluvan. And her guide, Vandana, I never knew her family name was Sekira. Sekira is the one who has given us the whole Tamil scripture on all the Nayanmas, Teriya Puranam. He has given. So I say that through this paper, I have become a co-author with Tiruvalluvar and Sekira. So for me, this was a very great moment where two of the eminent literary figures of Tamil culture have come alive in a different way. I will never forget this. I didn't realize it till we had to cite this paper because you only know the person as Akshaya and you know the professor as Vandana. I didn't know the family name. Akshaya, I used to tease her. I'll never forget you because of Tiruvalluvar. But then when I saw Sekira, I said, wow, what, what a divine, divine providence that I have become a co-author with Tiruvalluvar and uh, Sekira. And all the students, I tell you our management, I bow to our management and our uh, leaders. Uh, Sayadurvaman sir, AK sir, and now Parija sir, and the whole team, and Srinivasan sir, such, such support. And the whole management, the family of Sri M.K. Rajagopalan, his son, Prashant Rajagopalan, all of them. What beautiful support were all the students at our deemed university, medical students, dental students, nursing students, allied health students, the faculty members, the cleaners, everybody is given a chance to have yoga free of cost. I tell you, this is one of the greatest strengths is to have such a benevolent support. And you can see yoga sessions in the middle of the medical classes and for the faculty and others, what beautiful opportunities we have. And when they come to Saita, this is in the Saita Yoga Hall, Patanjali Yoga Shala, you can see all of them just finding that inner bliss through the Brahmari Pranayama. And one of the great achievements last year before the pandemic came in uh, was the height of our achievement with all of them doing yoga together for the National Youth Day, celebrating uh, Swami Vivekananda's 157th Jayanti celebration. And you can just see that amazing team of the whole of SBV, all the students coming together in performing yoga is there on YouTube with an amazing set of videos. Now, that is the work. But then that will go away when Dr. Ananda retires and Dr. Meena retires and Dayanidhi gets his PhD and retires and all that. What is going to sustain it? You have to create the next gen. You have to create gen next. You have to create people who can take the message, torch bearers, to take the message to other institutions. And this is where our PG diploma, our certificate courses, and now the PhD, 11 PhD scholars doing the work in yoga therapy, so that you take it out into the community. And after all of this work, Medical Council of India now says, yes, bring it into MBBS. We are already ready for it. And this has been happening. So that is why we suggest the CITA model is a role model, can be adopted by all innovative colleges and universities when such regulations come into place. So we are giving a model. This is a model. Please adopt it. Maybe give some credit to us, but please adopt it. Because you know it is a working model. We have shown it can work with all our gold medalists. And this is where Balaji stands out because as a PG diploma in yoga therapy, he was gold medalist. And as MPhil yoga therapy, he was a gold medalist. And I don't think we have gold medals for PhD, but he and Daya are the first two uh, candidates in our batch. And again, as I have said, 25 years of knowing these two young boys becoming beautiful young men today, beautiful human beings, and will be the first PhDs uh, going out, unless of course, Rama Reddy sir beats them because he is on a, Fast forward to getting his uh, data collection and work done. And we have been so blessed by the support of the FES. I tell you, everything we do, the FES supports us. And you go on the net, you Google Sri Balaji Vidya Pete, and more than half of the news reports will be cited in yoga, which sometimes is a bit embarrassing because we are a healthcare university. And so sometimes you hold back because you want that, you know, you don't outgrow your uh, use. So you want to make sure you keep yourself in check sometimes. And amazing feedback from pioneers. Ammaji herself blessing us. Path-breaking innovation, much needed for the modern world. Congrats, SBB. 
Dr. Nagendra Guruji, the yoga guru of our prime minister, saying Saita is engaged in spreading awareness about traditional yoga and its benefits for the welfare of society. In addition to carrying out research in yoga to establish strong scientific foundation, which is most needed. What a beautiful endorsement and Bijlani sir, saying that we are balancing the difficult path of staying true to the tradition on one hand and adapting it to the modern world on the other. And my dear Kalavati in the UK, saying it's such an inspiration, there should be so many more projects like this in different parts of the world. Again, Shirley Tellis, the most pro prolific yoga researcher, uh, saying that we are doing the perfect seva with a strong knowledge base. And one of our alumni from France, talking about a great opportunity to train hands-on in the application of yoga and medicine. Excellent training in a yoga therapy department within a modern medical hospital with a unique team. And Sridhar and Sir of the Krishnamacharya tradition blessing us by saying we'll be one of the torch bearers in yoga therapy worldwide in time to come. And again, my dear Joseph, who's so magnanimous with his words, Saita is not just a center, it is the medicine of the future. And this is where, at this moment, I would say that we need to look at a SWOT, a SWOC analysis. What are our strengths? Supportive management, experienced faculty, super specialty medical facilities, extensive practicum with a hands-on clinical and research experience. But what is the weakness? Well, we are quite away, away from Pondicherry, so transport for many people becomes a difficulty. We have inadequate language skill of students often. It becomes an issue which many of us have that. Lack of opportunities in the public sector. I think this is where the government of India now slowly creating posts for yoga therapists. I think it is so important because without that, why do you want to spend your time and become a yoga therapist, spending your time, energy and money if you're not going to get a job? So this is a major issue which is slowly being rectified now. The opportunities, well, the government is promoting Ayush enthusiastically. Integrative, holistic mind-body medicine is the future. There's, there's no denial of that. It is the future of healthcare worldwide. And what are <laughs> the challenges we have to do? Well, when you are good, you have to keep being good. You have to keep running. You cannot stop and look back at your laurels. How to maintain the high standard to ensure qualitative research, education, and patient-friendly health care is there? And how can we prevent quackery? Because it is so easy to create people who are half-baked and go out there and say, I'll cure everything. And that then spoils the whole integration. Because the moment quackery comes in, modern medical specialist says, all of you are like that. You get labeled. So it is a very big issue we face. And Dilip Sarkar, well, my dear Dada, past president of the American heart, you know, this is where he combines both and that is why I love him so much. He is the past president of the American Heart Association and also the past president of International Association of Yoga Therapists. And what does he have to say? This is 21st century medicine. Now that is what we are talking about. Now at this moment, before I end, I would just like to say that we are so grateful. We are so grateful. And personally, for me, this journey is a journey of bringing to fruition my father's dream. My father's dream where yoga and modern medicine could work together in harmony. There could be a beautiful balance because there's so much of scope to work together. That's what I tried to give you in the first part of today's talk. The scope is infinite. And how can we do it? And then when we do it, how can we then share it as a role model for others to then take into their own situations? So thanking you all at this point on behalf of CITA and there is the Facebook, there is the YouTube, there's the website, and there's everything for sharing uh, so that we can all grow together and glow together in yoga. So at this point, I will end my presentation. I have tried to keep it rapid to keep up with our time and uh, we'll then move on to the next part. So thank you so much. Thank you, sir. It was uh, really amazing, sir. So Actually, in the first session by Bharata, sir, we have learned the, how yoga therapy, actually yoga in the spiritual way helps. 
and in the second session from you we can learn how in yoga scientifically helps in most of the people so it was really a amazing uh, talk from both of you in today it was a eye opening for most of us thank you sir. I, I don't want to fish for compliments, but if any of the panelists want to say anything, you are most welcome. Sir, we we cannot say any words about the, your speech, and the, it is an ongoing journey. We are in the middle. At one station, we have halted, and uh, keeping on experiencing uh, your uh, erudition and uh, regularly. And one thing I can say. If cider is a body, icer is a soul or a, a life of it. Without icer, I, I cannot imagine cider at all. So I cannot differentiate uh, uh, cider and icer. Uh, another thing is, it is something like when uh, after listening to Bartha ji about uh, Ishwara Pranidhana, it is something like for all of us, for all uh, your disciples, it is. Uh, Saitar or Aisar Pranidhana or Ananda Pranidhana, I can say. Uh, that's, the, uh, that's the only expression I can say. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you so much for that love, sir. Means so much, means so much. Namaste, sir. Thank you so much for the work. It feels like such a blessing to be in direct connection with you and your team. And of course, most of all, your family, because you set up a, a wonderful model on how personal life and professional life develop together. This is definitely a challenge for a lot of people um, to be able to integrate personal life with professional life. And so, on top of all of these amazing achievements that you do professionally, you're also able to model for us how to continue to care um, in your personal life. This is the, um, um, the pinnacle of Dharma, I think. And thank you for modeling it. And also your team members, Dr. Meena, Dr. Balaji, Daya, Ashri Daya, you know, you're all modeling that for us which I think it's one of the great, another great gift of Sanatana Dharma is that there, there doesn't need to be a split between one's professional life and one's personal life if it is according to the laws of Dharma and Sanatana Dharma. And so thank you. This is, you know, everything else, what can I say? I, I, I can't add anything. I'm only very grateful. And I can't wait to come with an internship to Saiter, so get ready. <laughs> Because I'm coming, I'm coming sometimes. But but more, most importantly, right, is this, um, yeah, this model, which not a lot of teachers are able to provide. And you do it, and you do it constantly, all of you uh, on social media, reminding us that there is no split. In fact, family life, professional life are one. And so how can you take care of other people if you don't take care of your family first, and vice versa? This is quite a quite a teaching in there. So thank you so much, so truly. Thank you for everything. Thank you so much, Sangeeta. And you know that for me, family is not just immediate family. My yoga family is very, very big. And I love every person who's part of my yoga family. And so it's, it's an extended uh, family, which uh, we have to strive to fulfill our dharma, no doubt about it. There's, there's no no other option. As Swamiji said, no option yoga. You have to fulfill your dharma. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. And you have to live the teachings. I think being a hypocrite and saying one thing and living something else, it makes no sense. Uh, it will just tear you apart. So you have to be what you are saying. When you teach something, it has to come alive. These concepts have to be brought alive by our thought, word, and deed. So thank you for recognizing that. Supporting it means a lot, means a lot. And you are most welcome when you come to Pondicherry. Uh, Saita and Sinta, uh, I think two departments will be uh, happy to have you uh, do some stuff here. So most welcome. Um, I could add just a, a share a sentiment. Um, 
Dr. Ananda, it's uh, as somebody that's out, I'm certainly not a medical professional, I'm, I'm uh, at a distance in understanding, but it's, uh, it's both fun and inspiring to hear the references that you make to some of the other yoga, some of the other yogi medical professionals who are doing quality work and, and to see that network, see a, gl a glimpse into that network of collaboration and, and, and peer support from, from uh, other quality leaders. It's, it's just, uh, it, it's uh, very inspiring. Uh, it gives, gives us further hope for, for the future. So thank you. I am uh, truly blessed to have support of such uh, wonderful people and I'm deeply grateful for it. And I always believe that when you receive love, you should give it back with uh, compound interest. So uh, <laughs> I think these things, they keep on growing. So thank you so much Prabhupada, for recognizing that. Namaste, sir. So uh, I just want to say I'm Dr. Ananda is always brilliant. So this was no different. And uh, this was really another brilliant presentation. But uh, I think what made this different is uh, he really laid a vision out for the future. Right? The future of medicine, the 21st century medicine is really going to be uh, integrative approach, mind, body, spirit. And uh, I think uh, not just a vision, but I think CITER is that reality. The vision has become a reality with CITER. And now it just needs for more people to take up that vision and more universities to take that mission and uh, implement it in their own colleges and for it to be taken around. So you are also one of the most, uh, you know, most equipped people to really articulate this vision because of your uh, immense knowledge in medicine as well as uh, spirituality. So you have that capacity to bridge both these uh, seemingly diverse uh, worlds and uh, sight is really an expression of that. And the language, like you say, you have to speak the language of science, which you are so well equipped to do so. So truly this is the vision of the future that has begun to manifest already. And you are really the person taking this forward. So we're very uh, honored to be uh, in your uh, vicinity, like uh, Sangeeta says, just to know you and to have this direct experience and you know, in relationship with you. So thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you so much, uh, Shailaja, for those words. And we hope that we can be uh, a model that others would like to follow. I think be someone as I like to say often, be the person you would like to have in your life. So when we are the person we would like to have in our life, I think similarly here, be the person that, you know, be the role model you would like to have in your life. I think that's a way forward here. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful journey. So. Namaste everyone, again. It's a, again, very, very marvelous section again. Each and every day, everyone is making very special. Of course, Dr. Sir is always special for everyone. And uh, so, uh, as Sangeeta said, with the, uh, I mean, the support from the family, maybe with the own family, maybe very less. From the yoga family, maybe more. <laughs> because after Amaj is a little, I mean, the over thing he got in every way. So that is, uh, now he, he feels that very less actually. So even though on top of that, he can go usual everything for everybody. That is uh, really uh, that uh, like uh, Swamiji, he can go to the, this extreme to other extreme that no one can really go. Uh, like uh, others said, he's, uh, I mean, a role model for uh, most of them. So uh, again, he had the blessings to have in his satsanga. Almost all the satsangis, he, he have like a very blessing from the, uh, I mean, the gurus and uh, God, he, he got the blessing to have all the real uh, seekers of the yoga. So that's a great blessings he had in his life. And so with that, he can go with the energy, he can go through. I mean, even though all the difficulties he's facing, but still he can go through. And uh, of course, all the generation is there. Uh, I mean, we have the, all the, I mean, the higher uh, three categories. We have uh, again, the Balaji, Dayanidhi, other generation also started with him, being with him from the young age. So I'm very sure that it will continue from the generation to generation. Again, yoga to yoga every day, every way, anyway, the yoga is continuing. 
even though all the yugas finish again it's just starting again like that the energy will be staying very strong as amaji says that sage energy they put very strong that won't go away it cannot take with any any cost of the thing we cannot take out from the universe so like that as my father said up to the uh, the sun is there the universe cannot i mean the universe any any trouble any obstacle any negative thing they they cannot do anything actually even though we face different different problems so like that it's very strong energy from the sage and the uh, i mean all the vedas and things so it's a uh, with that i mean different different people as i said through the vehicle through barda as as his fulfilling his name even with the essence of his name even his fulfilling in his uh, life like that all the people with his, with their energy he can go uh, but uh, i want to say finishing that uh, his anyway the purna purusha so he can do thank you thank you so much thank you so much uh, devsena for those kind words when when your wife can say good things about you it means something is going well um and i'm truly blessed truly blessed so i count my blessings every day um uh, it's interesting she ended with the word purna purusha because that is one of my uh, aspirations i'm not yet there but it's a aspiration because um, i did my schooling in bharatiya vidya bhavan and bharatiya vidya bhavan has this idea of purna purusha the wholesome human being a complete wholesome human being uh, and i think that has been one of the aspirations i remember from a very young age uh, you shouldn't be a peace meal person uh, you shouldn't be peace meal you have to be wholesome and i think that is that's a very important one and it's interesting she used that term before we conclude i will just um, uh, answer two questions that have come up one is from tarakeshwar and uh, uh, you are doing your msc yogic science from haridwar and uh, you are most welcome to join us for your uh, phd after that at site if you want Uh, so we do have a phd if you have a masters degree in uh, yogic science so i think that would be the way forward for you so uh, keep in touch with us and we'll take it forward the second is a very important question from ingan and as a professor of psychology she is asking a very pertinent question how can yoga therapy be integrated in psychology departments um i am looking forward to divya going into that field so you know over the next 5 6 years i think you are going to see my answer in action as she goes through her training in psychology and goes further in it but currently my perspective is that if psychology is to look at the whole of the human being we need a perspective that comes from the yoga darshana so i believe that important sections at least of the yoga darshana as were demonstrated by shri bharata today some of these pertinent sutras from the yoga sutra i believe that certain pertinent verses from the bhagavad gita pertinent aspects of the vedas and upanishads which are non sectarian because when you take it into university education people are worried about anything being sectarian so i believe that there are huge amount of teachings that can be taken and with recognition of their origin in the indian culture i think if we present it because if you look at most of the great minds uh especially jung he had a deep understanding of the chakric energies and this is being missed in modern times because you know something which we cannot perceive we tend to say it doesn't exist and today i looked at a cartoon where there's a guy sitting on a sofa having a snack and looking at a tv and he says that which i cannot see i don't believe and they are talking about all the 
radio waves and tv waves and you know how his mobile phone is getting the waves and you know all the electrons that are there around him and protons and neutrons and he cannot see any of that okay but in his mind he is like if i cannot see it it doesn't exist so i think bringing yoga as another perspective a time tested perspective based on a living culture and uh, one has to be a bit careful with these words because otherwise it will just be labeled uh, you know oh you are bringing religion into it or you know the same issues that alabama has had with bringing yoga into schools and by the time they got yoga into schools it's not yoga anymore so you know the, we 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 have these type of issues coming up but i think that uh, people who have a voice in departments in university should start at least offering a choice uh, based course it could be an optional course where people could come for it and initially maybe even a course that may not have academic credit so you know just to kinder interest in people have what would be you know a small club where there could be a discussion a weekly discussion on these topics to which people would be welcome faculty and students of the department and invite people who are able to speak the language again one needs to speak the language just as i, I said we need people who speak the language of modern medicine to communicate the yoga if you go and tell a modern medicine doctor oh i am going to change the prana shakti and the udana will go this way and the apana will go that they'll run away from you and then you say oh modern medicine doesn't know anything i know everything now if you take that attitude you have just created antagonism so i think we need to find this language and uh, i think uh, you yourself ingan being a person who has an understanding of yoga and understand psychology and the working of a department may be the person who can spearhead this and there are people in yoga such as uh, dr lata satish at the kym in chennai and so many others uh, including some of the younger generation prasida and all at kaivalya dharma and there's a, there's a whole team uh, i think i was just thinking of uh, you know stoma ji stephen parker of the himalayan tradition and how he is bridging his book is one of the best books in that type of bridging so i think creating a communication channel creating a place where people could meet and discuss about it and maybe do a few breath based practices uh you know things like that a few relaxation you know invite people to a relaxation session and then they say what is this relaxation and you go into it so i think maybe it needs to start from the periphery and then slowly uh, find a way this is just how i would approach it and i thank you for that question but i when you start working on that uh, please do know that you will have a very strong cheerleader in me so uh, i'm happy to be a cheerleader for such work and if there are anybody who i can co-opt onto my cheerleading team i'll bring them in also so i wish to thank you for that question and we, we will conclude at this point today uh, tomorrow we have our final day of uh, sessions of course monday morning uh, from 7 we will have our the common yoga protocol session but tomorrow we have a session by dr manjunath the pro vice chancellor of sbsa talking about yoga research and then of course we end with the most dynamic uh, yoga shakti session by my dear shailaja where she is going to uh, take us through an approach to stress i personally am going to be coming in and out of the session tomorrow because uh, thanks to ramareddy sir he and i have been invited by the indian psychiatric society to give special talks so i think this is a great moment that this is happening but i'm inviting all of you spread the good word be in the zoom webinar yoginar and if not facebook is there and if not facebook live youtube saita youtube is always there just google youtube saita and all those hundreds of videos come up so thanking you all for being with us today we close with the prayer om sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve badrani pashyantu ma kaschid dukkha bhagavet 
ಓಂ ಲೋಕ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಸುಖಿನೋಂತು ಸರ್ವೇ ಜನಾಹ ಸುಖಿನೋಂತು ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಧನ್ಯವಾದ ಮಲ್ಸಿ ಘಾಟ್ಸಿ ನಂಡ್ವೇ ವಣಕ್